um, what we're here to talk to you about today is how to drive da data-driven video programs. So I'm going to take just a few minutes to give you some fundamentals for the kind of data we think you should be looking for as you get the most out of video investments if you have them. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jack who's going to tell us uh, and give us some real world, ex real world experience in how he's doing that. So since this is a data-driven uh, session, let me, let me start with some data. So I don't expect you to, to read this, but you know, there's, there's a lot of buzz. There's a lot of gut feel that we have in what video can do for us. As consumers, you experience it. Um, and certainly, it's, it's, it's been a hot topic here. Uh, this is an e-tail um, consumer survey that's done every spring. It, what, and what's interesting, if you look at these categories in the arena of customer experience, um, the likelihood to buy and satisfaction, we're seeing consumers, soon to be a majority of them, wanting to engage in this kind of content. The other thing that's interesting is the pace at which this is increasing. So we're seeing a 15 to 20 percent increase from last year to this year, uh, and we're, we're quite anxious to see the results next year. Um, so really, you need to, starting with the end in mind, the goal in mind, there's a lot of different things you can use video content for. Um, it, it, it's, a tricky, um, it's a tricky medium. You can have too little, you can have too much, you could overspend. There's a lot of things that you could do not exactly right uh, and, and not get your maximum ROI and the experience that, you, that you're looking for. So what we suggest and what we, what we think you should look for in your programs is an end-to-end -end view of the measurement of the program that starts with understanding what is the coverage on my site, how many of my products, how many of my visitors am I engaging with that sort of content. A methodology for measuring how you turn those visitors into viewers. Um, until an eyeball hits, hits the content, there, there's no value exchanged and your visitor is not you know, experiencing the benefits of that. Um, and then ultimately to conversion. What sort of performance are we going to get? And then being able to look at these, track these, optimize these o over time. Um, incremental revenue measurement is, is, is a hot topic. And with video, you have the opportunity to very easily uh, create control groups um, and measure the, the incremental value. Uh, we see viewers of video anywhere from three to five times more likely to convert but there's self-selection bias within that. So in doing a test like this, you know, what, what we've seen is anywhere from, say, 15 to 30 percent lift in incremental revenue and conversion associated with that, but also a comparable lift in average order value and uh, items per cart. So this is something that you want to start out of the gate with in your program. Finally, in the, the engagement metrics. So Looking at metrics like this to understand where your visitors, how they're engaging with the media. How are they, uh, the conversion events, where are they adding to cart, where are they purchasing, where are they dropping off. This feeds into optimization and improvements in merchandising, calls to action, and certainly the investments you're making in the content. And finally, the voice of the customer. So you, you need the ability to take the feedback from the videos, and here's, here's an example of some, you know, are, are your customers reacting well to the content? What are they telling you about what works and what doesn't work? Um, you, you've invested in a very interesting piece of content that you think they're going to love, but if you get about a bunch of information that says, actually, I really need to see more features and benefits of the product, then you know how to optimize and, and, and tweak your program. So with, that, with those kind of background and fundamentals, uh, let me turn it over to Jack, who's going to tell you about some of his real-world experiences uh, with the video program. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Cliff. All right. Um, how many people here are familiar with Sigma? All right. Uh, for everyone else, uh, Sigma Corporation of America is um, a subsidiary of Sigma Corporation of Japan. We are the largest uh, independent lens manufacturer on the planet. We make lenses for Canon, Nikon, Sigma, Panasonic, Pentax, and Olympus cameras. Uh, we have a line that's about 45 lenses, 45 plus lenses um, in market. We have a lot of different products aimed at everyone from beginners to uh, 
super specialized pros. Um, price from two th uh, about $200 up to $28,000 uh, plus. <clears throat> and in early 2012, it was thrown to me to get a video program up and live on all of our product pages as quickly as possible. Um, and in less than 90 days, we went from signing a contract with Envoto to having videos live and embedded on every one of our product pages. Um, and it was, uh, it was a really uh, fun and intense process. Um, our goals were to quickly and effectively differentiate our products, increase customer engagement. Um, our primary conversion metric is um, the purchase intent by clicking on a find a dealer um, find a dealer button on the product pages. We do a very small percent of our um, sales direct. It's primarily to drive to the dealer. So that's our primary conversion metric. Uh, but as you can see here, we have a uh, number of products that have a lot of overlap. How do you differentiate between those? How do you find out which one of these is key? And that was what we wanted to do, <clears throat> was quickly and effectively give a video solution to teach everyone the, the key benefits of these and make them realize which of these was going to be right for them to, get, to give them the best the best lens for them out of all the, the, possible, um, the possible solutions. Um, and of course, all the secondary um, results were to help with the SEO um, and create more content um, and shareable content, which and we've done a lot in addition to just having these products on our product pages, which has been a lot of fun. And uh, we've gotten some really great feedback on that. Uh, for example, this here's two lenses. It's a 70 to 300 millimeter lens and a 120 to 300 millimeter lens. On paper, these look very much the same, but these are very, very different products geared towards very, very different market segments. Here you go. This is the 70 to 300. Um, is a great entry-level telephoto zoom lens for beginners. It's one of our best-selling lenses. It's pretty much very often the second lens that someone buys right out of the gate because it takes the kit lens and it gives them reach so that they can get their kid at the soccer game or get the birds at the park. It's got a, a map right now, the street price of $359. Here's a video for it. We're going to stop it right there. I've got a couple of videos to show, um, but I want to stop it right here. One of the things that Invoto worked with us on when we were scripting these out was they told us that information that is important on screen is often scrubbed back to. And so we included all of the mounts that it's available in on uh, both spoken and on screen in every one of the videos. We also included a lot of bullet points of key features. And they told us this was something that was very, very interesting information and as we've discovered people scrub back and watch this so we have engagement spikes at any time we have this sort of visual information on the screen that's repeated so and we're hammering home that messaging um, now this one the 120 to 300 millimeter lens the first lens we looked at is about this big weighs about 18 ounces this lens is about this big weighs close to eight pounds it's a top-of-the-line professional lens it's highly customizable with a unique software it's, this is the kind of lens that you'll see on the sidelines of uh, the World Series, uh, professional sporting events, and it's got a, a street price or a map that's 10 times the price of the previous lens. Very, very different market segments, even though on paper, at first glance, they look very, very similar. So this helps us quickly and effectively. You look at two videos, you look at the information on, uh, you know, in these videos, and you can identify yourself as use case scenario one, use case scenario two. The Sigma 120 to 300 millimeter f2.8 DG OS HSM sports lens combines the performance of a prime telephoto with constant aperture zoom versatility. This lens is an action-stopping all-star. Features including optical stabilizer That's my and daughter. flash and dust-proof construction help make winning shots. This high-performance professional lens can be paired with the optional USB dock for customization of autofocus speed, focus limiter range.
Additionally, we made um, a number of series of informational videos that were product diagnostic um, or dealt with a number of products to explain some key messaging um, and key features and different lens types, like what is the difference between a prime lens, a macro lens, or a zoom lens. Um, and the, the point we made was each lens has its strengths and was positive differentiation. Every lens is a compromise. So you choose this lens for this reason, you choose that lens for this reason. This one's going to have some strengths in this column and some weaknesses in the other. That big, fast F28 lens, eight pounds, $3,000 um, plus. The other lens, smaller, more compact, slower, less light gathering, um, but it, it can fit in your bag and you can carry it without a Sherpa. Um, so we just positively differentiated um, each lens type. We're going to skip over that because we're running a little bit short on time here. Um, one of the things that we loved about this was having these videos um, embedded on the pages and the way that uh, working with Envoto and them keywording and including some of the scripting into the, the video asset was fantastic search results. This is the Sigma USB doc. You search for the, the, the title of that and it's one of the, it's the uh, right now it's the top, it was the top organic result a, a couple of days ago and it shows people that we have a video about that and it's on our site and this drives people into our site to our product page to look for this. Um, we're very pleased with that and we're finding that people who go onto the pages and watch the videos have a higher, much higher likelihood of clicking onto the, uh, the find a dealer button than people who do not view the video. Um, we're getting <coughs> great, great um, uh, viewer rates three times in Voto's industry average um, and working with them um, both in our scheduled meetings to talk about insights and reports and also when we notice little anomalies um, we just did a, a site relaunch and sh for the first couple of weeks after a site relaunch our, our uh, play percentage took a little bit of a downturn and up here in the corner the, uh, the view video button was in black and that was the biggest change from the previous site um, where it was red and it was on top of the product image. And so we quickly decided that we were going to switch it back to red um, to make it more visible on the page and our, our play percentages went back up. So that's being very, very adaptive and looking at what's happening and taking a look at trends and just reacting quickly helped us get right back where we wanted to be. Three out of the five video viewers watched a 90% completion and um, we're getting really, really positive feedback on these. Um, and interestingly, I was just looking at reports yesterday, um, and uh, one, one of our best playing videos in, in particular had 85% of people were watching to 50%, and then 75% were watching to 80%. So there's very, very little fall off. If people are watching to 50%, they're watching to 80%. And that's, that's, that just really, just gets me excited that the videos are so compelling and are doing what we want them to do, which is drive awareness, drive interest, and help people understand the products and the value props of them. Um, and these watch, yes? The average length, they, they range from about 90 seconds. Uh, I think the shortest one is actually 81 seconds. The longest one is three minutes and 15 seconds. Um, and again, we always, we try to find that sweet spot of somewhere around two minutes. Um, Sometimes we're a little bit more verbose. Some of the ones we weren't as verbose. Um, but interestingly, we haven't noticed that there, there's been significant fall off. If people are engaged, they're engaged. Um, and the things that are very interesting, those, those watch spikes um, where people go back and scrub back to get that, the, glean that information that's repeated on screen. And this is what differentiates this lens who is this lens for, um, you know, what camera mounts are the, is this lens for, and also the end use images, you know, so people can look at those image quality images. And these are things where, where people are going back and watching it and hitting pause and watching it a couple of times. And uh, <clears throat> when we did our second round of videos this spring, we, we initially in 2012 did fi uh, 50 videos with them. This spring we did 14. And based on the information that we had that people were interested in the on-screen on information, the end-use photos, we kicked up the amount of, um, you know, point hammering on-screen and end-use photos, and we're seeing that people are, are continuing to scrub back over that. So that's sort of, you know, one of those adaptive um, exercises. And when we build more videos with them next year, we're going to look at the learnings from this year and take those forward. Um, 
video viewers are much more likely to click through to find one of our re retailers than non-viewers. Um, that's just, that's, it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is just fantastic. Um, we're using, a lot, and we're using these for a lot of secondary uses. Our primary goal was to have informational videos on every single product play, pages. But dealers have asked us for, for these in Blu-ray and SD uh, video loops to play in their stores. We play these at trade shows and loops. Um, we've put them up as social sharing aspects on Vimeo, and select vendors are allowed to embed them onto their site. And one of our top dealers has 29% load to play percentage. That means that the people who are going to their page to look at our products are very, very interested in learning more about their products. And uh, we just are we're very, very excited to find that. Uh, and this is very, very cool. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have a good working Wi-Fi connection on my iPod right now. But Pop Photo Interactive, Popular Photography, is the largest photography magazine. It's one of our key advertisers. Um, Pop, popular Science and Popular Photography have something called Pop Photo and Pop Sci Interactive, where you load an app onto your iPhone. You pick up your iPhone, you point your app at this page, and our video pops up. Our, adver uh, our product video pops up right on your iPhone. And I know how it works. I understand the technology behind it. I, you know, uploaded the video to their server. I still think it's magic that you know you can just point something at the page and have it just play a video for you. And uh, it's really, really just creates compelling content. And the fact that when pop, popular photography came to us and said, "Hey, we have pop." Pop Photo Interactive launching next month. Do you guys have anything that you want to put on your page? Do you have anything that you have? And we said, we have these fantastic assets that are you know, informational videos about all of our products. And we've now featured 10 different uh, uh, of the videos and 10 different present uh, 10, 10 different products have been featured in Pop Photo and Pop Sci Interactive. Um, and so that's, that's basically it. Um, that's, that's it. And we did this a little while ago. Um, and we were so happy with the success with the first round of videos that we did in 2012. We just contracted and launched another uh, 14 videos this spring. And we went 60 days from contract to live on site. And uh, it's, it, it's really, it's been a, it, it's just been a great program to see how it works and uh, the, the learning from the data that we have. Um, both in terms of the reports and just on the fly. I mean, for example, yesterday we just looked and one of our top performing videos for the past 60 days is in a lens that we've been actively promoting. And we're looking at this and there's a lot of interest in this. This is completely organic. So we decided we're going to push this more because we're realizing that there is a lot of interest in this. And that's part of that, you know, looking at what's happening and applying it quickly and effectively to, you know, get on, to, you know, get on the trend of what's happening on your site. So between looking in a structured environment and also on the fly, it's, it's working really well for us to integrate the video into our site. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Could take one quick question. Hmm. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if you're able to track any of the performance down through after the dealer link down to the dealers, if you're able to see any difference in purchase behavior, watch the video, didn't watch the video. Are you able to follow that, that consumer all the way down through? Or we, no, we, lo we lose the tracking at that point. It goes into a different, uh, goes into a different system. Anyone else? No, that's it. Thank you very much. Great.